the once every five years and the lotto hits five billion dollars i'm like i go throw 20 bucks at it when i'm in line someone and i'm like one two three four five like that's never gonna happen i'm like do you understand how math works and i realize they're playing the lotto of course they don't know how math works (laughs) there's no surprise to me here a friend of mine and i always say gambling is a tax on people who are bad at math yeah my friend's like oh let's go to vegas i'm like yeah let's go to vegas i always have fun eat drink good restaurants like oh i love to play roulette and i always say it doesn't matter how sober or drunk i am i have the same line yeah i say instead of playing roulette how about you give me half your money and i kick you in the dick the same experience (laughs) right i say this one one time in vegas to a friend of mine who was listening to this show and i say this like all like smart ass gets a laugh and then he swiftly kicks me in the nuts oh no right after yeah (laughs) buy it please i'm like what the fuck that's not (laughs) how this works i kick you in the nuts and take half your money two That's a truly terrible podcast. Welcome to Nonsense Season 2, Episode 39. I'm Jeff Parker. <laughs> what's the what's the song? What oh, sorry. Funny? Nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm the other guy. <laughs> was that Taps? Yeah, that was, that was my what are you shitty playing version there? of Taps. I'm, I'm not, I am not the beatbox that I once was. This is our take on the week's business tech and entertainment headlines. This time, we'll look at some important headlines. No, nothing's happened. There's been nothing interesting that's happened. <laughs> that's going to be a rough show, isn't it? Jesus it's Men Christ. Make Dinner Day. Yep. If you identify as a man, then throw on an apron, sharpen those knife skills, and create incredible evening meals for yourself, your friends, or your family. Despite gender roles becoming less rigid in America, there are still many men who are not taught to cook and don't take the initiative or confidence to enter the kitchen and create a meal for themselves or a loved one. Today is all about giving men the encouragement to get in there and whip up something amazing. I'm all about giving uh, all people the encouragement to cook food for themselves and, and the strength to do so. Sure, sure. However, I think with most men, the problem isn't encouragement they're lacking. They just no? they just think someone else should be serving them. It's going to be a dark show, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is the world wow. we're in now. It's just... Uh, yeah. Let's get it all out. I have jury duty next week, so we will not have a show next week. I know people laugh that we like to plan their week around nonsense by telling when we're going to be here and when we're not. Sure. However, I don't want you to think that we all died when we don't show up next week. I, we didn't. We're still here. I just... I have jury duty. Sure. I am just not optimistic for the, the poor people to get you on their panel in your grumpy ass state. <laughs> next week <laughs> good. there's no promises i'll be on a Look panel you always get on a panel you're like the guy last time i was on jury duty i was literally the jury four for a case exactly and i think they marked the you on a justice list. system yes they yeah. hated me so much sure. that it's been years since i've gotten a notice for to do jury duty a long long time they clearly were not happy yeah. with my work i tried hard to be a good juror rural juror rural juror <laughs> Rural juror. Oh, what a simpler time that was. I have been dreading asking you this question since Tuesday night, and and here it is. There's no kind of way to avoid it. How's your week going? What uh, what happened Tuesday night? What do you? I don't. You were out camping, right? You don't have any idea what's going on. Yeah, we're uh, we're looking at, at caves. We're looking at caves up in the sequoias. <laughs> Lovely places to go. I, ironically, I am actually planning on going camping this weekend. That's great. And you know, maybe I don't know. Maybe we just learn how to hunt and we stay out there. Who knows? Who knows? I will say this week, one of the 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 absolute highlights of my week was taking my kids all the way through the voting process, which was really cool because they're very into it. And we sort of showed them the the voting by mail system and the in-person went to the polling place, showed them how, how this works. And sure, sure. It was really cool. Like they were really excited about it. They did in their school. They had mock voting on uh, uh-huh. on Tuesday. Yeah. As you know, it was probably the biggest story in this election cycle. It was cookies versus cupcakes and uh, zebras <laughs> versus lions. Oh, wow. Which I think is hysterical. Sure. And I, I asked my son, who he voted for and he said cookies and zebras yeah. and I said who won he said cookies zebras and lions and I said how how is that possible and he said well zebras and lions were tied the lions ate the zebras yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. but he said zebra and lions were tied and I was like you guys need a better runoff system clearly this is not <laughs> the way that it's supposed to work but I just think it's really cute and getting them that process I mean the the school they're at the upper school actually votes on the ballot like they actually take the California ballot and all the state initiatives oh wow and every and they actually vote on which I think is really great as a as a way to do some sort of training before you just turn 18 and you're thrust into a voting box and you know you're just just bubbling in to make a fun pattern on the scantron like let's do something a little better than that the, the california ballot's pretty great the way oh, it's, man. it's printed the, out the way you fill the, it in the, it's, act, it's, yeah. it's a technological marvel it is really well done i mean forget about the stuff you're actually voting for right like we've got a yeah, of, course, of course of course state constitutional 
amendment system that I think is terrible and shouldn't exist. Set aside all of that. I'm not talking about any of that. Yes, the mechanism of how you do it is really impressive. Yeah, just the mechanics of it are incredible. It's pretty It's pretty neat. And it is this, I definitely want to do an episode on this at some point. It is this balance between you have to authenticate that it's a, a, a valid ballot, despite what other people think, yeah. but you also yeah. want a, a uh, privacy, a, anonymous voting. You want privacy. Yeah. And that is really, that's a hard problem. That's a really hard problem to solve. And I think they've done a great job. I think their implementation is really good and really smooth, which is not something I, I typically expect at this scale from government. If you've been to the DMV, this is not true. We need the people that run the voting process to also run the DMV. And that would be great. Everybody says that. My last DMV experience has been great, but because I've taken the time to get an appointment before I go. Getting the appointment certainly helps. It's a 10 minute window for when, when they're going to you know get to me. And I, I can give them 10 minutes plus or minus. Who cares? Yeah. But every time I go, all I want to do is pay with Bitcoin and they look at me like I'm an idiot. Or because you are. No. <laughs> Well, I guess that's, I'm sorry, 0.0125 BTC. How much is my registration this year? Although you may be paying with Bitcoin shortly. Oh, Jesus. All right. Back to the cave. Sadly, the only way I can record this show from the cave is with Starlink. So now I've got to also feel dirty even doing that in the cave. Didn't see Ben want the dollar to go away. He just wants I don't, cryptocurrency or something like that. I, I am constantly looking at URLs to see if they say onion.com in them. I never know what's true anymore. I'm like, is this the Babylon Bee? I'm like, oh no, this actually happened. Oh, okay, this cool. Is, this is real. Okay. Sure, yeah, sure. Sweet. Yeah, US dollar. So other than your children having a good time, how is your week going? Do you want to talk about some of the things? It's been great. We are a science, tech, and business show. We, no, And what no. just happened in the world, and entertainment, I know, a little bit of entertainment. We, we were a science tech <laughs> entertainment show. Past yeah, past. why is that gone? What happened? That's not going to be a thing anymore. <laughs> Those things yeah. are all gone? <laughs> yeah. Now, now we're going to be the anti-fluoride show. We're going to be the show... <laughs> That mainly just talks about how shitty we want your teeth to be. Let me just promise uh, listeners here that we're going to try to contain our election-related conversation to this segment. Sure, no spillover. Just be grumpy now. Try not to spill Get over. it all out. Yeah. The problem is I can only punch myself in the dick so many times. After a while, my fist starts to hurt. Uh, <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts on, uh, you know, the RFK. He's going to be the uh, the guy who's in charge of the medical world. Welcome back. Smallpox, polio, measles, vaccines are, are going to be made illegal. I don't I don't know a, a, a ton about the guy. I don't follow him closely. It does seem like he yeah. doesn't follow the scientific process as much as I would like and likes to assume that people in science aren't following the scientific process, yeah. which I, I don't find to be true. Only he knows the truth. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this is black and white. I, I don't, you know, he talks a lot about getting rid of corruption and I think that aligns with efficiency. Sure. It doesn't mean there's not corruption. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like- 100% true. Science, for the most part, works and has worked for the past- And ultimately gets it right. Couple hundred years, right? Yeah. It might take a while to get there, right. but it does generally get it right. And I don't think he buys that view. And that is disappointing to me. Because I, I don't know about you, I happen to really like science. Are you a fan of fluoride in your water? Delicious. You know, his point on fluoride is like, we need to study it again. Okay, I can even accept that premise. You've got better tech now. Yeah. Let's take a look at it again. I can accept that, no problem. But he says, you know, you need to study again. And, oh, by the way, you're all liable. And, uh, you know, you probably shouldn't. Well, wait, that's not studied again. We've had fluoride in our water for how many years? This is not something we just did on a lark. No, but you just <laughs> cross the dot to the neck of like, well, that's why we're all fat. Yeah. No, you're all fat because you eat at fucking Chick-fil-A five days a week. That's why you're fat. You're not fat from the fluoride or whatever the thing is that it gives you. The cancer or the, the fact that we've eradicated smallpox or polio or measles. Like, no, those vaccines are terrible. Okay, show me the data. Where's the data, buddy? Uh, we eradicated smallpox. Polio is still out there. Measles still out there. Very, very tiny amounts of them. But without vaccines, they will flare right back up. And that will be our future. I mean, he talks about the <laughs> pandemic like we weren't all there. Yeah. It, it's just fascinating to me. I think there's a lot of hindsight is 2020 and also a lot of just not accepting the development of the science. Like what every fucking person that worked on the vaccine development should get a Nobel Prize. Yeah. They worked their asses off trying to save as much of the, the population as they could. Yeah. Actually, the creation of the vaccine was pretty simple because with mRNA, we were able to very, very quickly sequence the, the DNA of, of the virus. Yeah. Science. Science, is, science is cool. Science is As really it cool. turns out, the science works pretty well. But, you know, shots bad. Shots bad. And mandating shots bad. Yeah. So I'm full of fucking optimism. Oh, but tell me what you think he's going to do with electric vehicles. On the, on the campaign trail, he said he would end the electric vehicle mandate on day one and that EVs don't work and that they benefit China and Mexico while hurting American auto workers. Meanwhile, he's got Elon Musk who worked valuable 
valiantly to get him elected. Sure. By the way, we also have to talk about Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. Turns out was not a failure, but a massive success. Oh, for sure. If you have news cycles of misinformation, the folks that yeah. like to sit on top of misinformation or, or non-factual information are going to benefit. Unfortunately, we, we conflate that with free speech. That's not free speech. And I think this is a really sticky wicket. Free speech is not the ability to just freely lie, to just make things up. I mean, people can stand on the street corner and yell, the earth is flat. And for the most part, I go, yeah, I, I guess you can do that. I don't know if I call it free speech, but like you're allowed to be an idiot. Yeah. Okay. You can be wrong. Yeah. I think the problem is when we've lost, this isn't a speech problem. We've lost like the ability to think for ourselves. We've lost the ability to dig in on anything and go, well, wait, what do I think? Is that true? And instead of just, you find the one piece of information that validates whatever your feeling is. And that's now your research. And that, that's what I really think Twitter has enabled. Okay. Enough with the headline of the day. We're going to talk about other headlines that are not related to this. Yeah. I need to just go have a real quick cry. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. I haven't seen you for a while. It's been a whole seven seconds. How are you? Oh my God. I want to talk about some old news stories. Not old news stories, but news stories that we didn't we get We miss to. a lot of news. Well, we do, especially when we talk about things that happen every four years. So you're saying you should go to, you want to do two episodes a week now? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that, no, but I am saying I want to go back and look at some stories that we just blew right Did you hear by. that? Literally all of our listeners just recoiled in horror when I said that. <laughs> there was a grumble that went through the entire world. I was world. right with them. Yeah, I yeah. was right with no, them. No, they're not wrong. You guys aren't wrong. I have a terrible idea. Let us start with Google's yes. big sleep AI project. And they have a pro AI project that's called Big Sleep. Called Big Sleep. Do you okay. know why it's called Big Sleep? I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions. It's going to help me go to sleep. It's an AI that sings lullabies customized to me <laughs> so that I fall asleep. That would be awesome, but no. That would be amazing. It is an AI that finds software bugs. And this little piggy went to the hometown buffet. And, and this little piggy went to the hometown buffet. That's all it does. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's not a very it smart AI, but it knows me very well. <laughs> Uh, wait, it finds software bugs? Software bugs on its own. And the idea was that they'll yeah. be able to you know, come to work and nap because the software will find the bugs. Wait, the, the, the AI or the don't. researchers? The researchers will be able to take a nap because they won't have to be finding the bugs yeah. because the AI don't, will find the bugs for them. tell your boss that. You don't want them to know that. That's what big sleep is called. It really That's means. That's really funny. What was it called? It was na originally called nap time or something. Oh, it was, like it was called like project nap yeah. time or something before? <laughs> That's hysterical. I love that name. That's fantastic. Anyway, they found actually they ran it on uh, a, a SQLite. An open source database engine. Yeah. They found a serious, serious bug. Okay. A memory safety issue. Like a serious XM bug? No. Oh. A major bug. You make this very hard. I thought maybe serious XM bug. Like there's some code that said slash slash Howard Stern here. Wow. No. A memory safety issue. Always fucking memory safety issues. Used in software that's used yeah. all over the world. This software is massively pop. I mean, most people don't know they're using it. It's part of some other program, but it's used all over the place. It's an open source program. And they found this this bug. I, I do feel like we should have like a mass intervention where we just bring like just for like one, like a long weekend, like Veterans Weekend. Yeah. Let's bring all the developers in the world together okay. into one place. And just be bored out of and, our minds. And just tell, well, there's be a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Let's just, just insist that you only use memory safe languages from now on. Just Oh, yeah, that would help. Everything else stop using. That would help. Like, yeah. it's 2024, folks. Like, come on. I know you've got legacy programs. We have to migrate all those. Like, there should just be, yeah. like, at some point, remember, I, I've been an advocate. Yeah. If you have a data breach, a CIO should go to prison. Yeah. If you're still running unchecked memory in 2028, you should just have to go to prison. Like, I, I just I don't know what other I, I don't think there are enough Rust developers at this point to be able to do that. But the day will come. Well, this this is how you get them there, right? Just like how 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 Apple gave us the USB C port by putting only USB C ports on all of their their you computers. You force the issue. You yeah. force the issue. Yeah. But here's the thing: if you're still using unsafe memory handling in in 2028, yeah, yeah. the prison that you go to is just where you have like an old 286 laptop and you have to write JavaScript all day. That's <laughs> wow. it. That's the prison. That or Pascal. <laughs> we'll just give them Pascal. And you're like colon <laughs> equals. What the fuck is this? this i don't that doesn't make any sense it's actually you're like just use pascal come on this is it you you, you knew better what you, would you like what task would you give them like what what was the worst you like they only have to recreate websites that have gone under like you have to make pets.com in three weeks and pitch it to us go <laughs> you probably could make pet.com in you pascal now, you probably could yeah, yeah right you probably could now because it, if you look back at what a what a basic basic simple site totally. this was where do you do you think here's a great question for you do you think the code base the pets.com still exists yeah of course it has to somewhere where Some, where somewhere Somebody's got it. I don't Cause, know. Because they went bankrupt, right? I'm sure they did. Yeah. So do you think, yeah, but but it doesn't mean it has to, like somebody could have bought it. Don't you think there's some web archives way back machine that has that code somewhere? Public facing, yes. But 
where do you think the actual code is? I feel like we need to do an episode on this because like some like I remember PetSmart bought some of the assets, right? So and this was like when they went, they went back up like twenty five years ago. They bought customer lists. I don't think they. Yeah, bought, yeah. I don't think. But they like, bought. but where did? But who? Who has the code? The code might not have been bought by anybody, yeah. or it might be like in like it might be like on some dat tape sitting in someone's like you know shoebox. That's what I would think. Some developer somewhere, and then like grandpa dies, and then they're just like, "What's this? What's uh, pets dot com? Huh? Right. Dat tape? What's that? That's probably his collection of really weird porn. Don't open that. What it is is the the source code to pets.com that's the one next it says really weird pet porn yeah. I, I, and so no one ever looks i mean i think about projects i worked on back then and i'm willing to bet that source code is gone like gone yeah maybe no one has a backup of it you know you had some procedures maybe you know what i might actually have an archive tape somewhere of something that was like anything that preceded git there's a good chance you know but, is gone even, forever. but even if you had but everything that followed git don't you think we probably have most everything um no no i think we definitely don't because you still have private hosting you still have like even pre-git you had you had hosted svn and you still had SVN in the yeah, cloud, yeah, but yeah, you also had sure. self-hosted SVN. But you dumped that stuff always. I mean, the, you know, a company went under, and who knows where that stuff went? No, no. Oh, you are, you are so cute. You are so naive. <laughs> you know, these places don't. They just trust it to one. There'll be like some server in the back that hasn't been touched in eight years, and it has all of their IP on it, all of their source code, all of their knowledge, no backups. But I'm saying that company then goes bankrupt, and somebody just hauls that thing out to the dumpster and back, and doesn't realize even what's on it. That's what I mean. That shit's gone. Like right. So that stuff is gone. Oh yeah. That's what that. Wait, did you just flip positions on me? We're agreeing. We're we're on the same. Are you we're on the, no, we're on the, me? Okay. We're on the same side of this argument. I said, if I remember correctly, we'll check the tape, sir. But if but if I remember correctly, I said, what do you think the, the code to pets.com is and some other asshole other than me was like oh somebody's got it somewhere and i'm like i don't know about that oh i do think somebody has pets.com because that was huge you think the pets.com code exists somewhere man i don't know I, I think there are some developers somewhere who worked on it who just happened to save copies of it save like some snapshot first okay. of all it wasn't all that much code sure and well no because it, had, it they, wasn't they had e-commerce i mean it had commerce yeah yeah there. yeah but it was really rudimentary of e-commerce course. It, was, it, was, it was 99 you know, it was 2000 right like, it exists somewhere well i'm sorry it existed somewhere i'm not saying it does still exist. I want to know the answer to this. If we have a listener that has any insight on this, please email us a snippet of the code to prove pets.com that you know where the pets.com, but like all that stuff, right? Like it now remember, uh, I don't know why we're talking about this right now, but GitHub did that project where they took uh repos and they etched them on glass and put it in like the Norway yeah, 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 yeah. bunker, which sure. I thought was super cool. Sure. And like, I just, I love that, that code will live forever until some in 5,000 years, someone's going to find it and be like, Oh, they figured out how to rotate letters by 13 places. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Really or or they'll, they'll pick this up. They'll say, what is it? And they'll accidentally drop it and it'll shatter. I bring you these 50,000, <laughs> 30,000 repos. Right. <laughs> oh, well, that's a great Mel Brooks line. You're just one big EMP blast away from having to rewrite SQLite from scratch. But that might not be a bad thing. I mean, really, somebody, somebody, I'm going to go back to what you were saying. Somebody needs to write it in Rust. Somebody needs to write it in a memory safe Wait, language. So my version of this is like, okay, I need all the JavaScript code to go to Kansas on March of 2025 <laughs> no reason just need it all in one place just and go then, just go meanwhile i come driving up in a in like a fucking u-haul and i'm just like doo, 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 doo. just park it right in the middle and just i'll be right back and then just run the other way anyway tsmc suspended shipments to china after chip found on huawei processor yeah now you and i talked about this and we talked about you know if if tsmc had was making chips for huawei or someone who was giving them to huawei they would probably know it because when huawei makes a phone they sell an enormous amount of phones this wasn't for huawei phones this was for a company made, named Softgo, yep. who then gave the chips to Huawei. Yep. But it was for AI processing. Yeah. And it was the Ascend 910B chip, yeah. which is, you know, a fairly good competitor to the A100, which yeah. is which the is NVIDIA's NVIDIA chip. AI chip. Yeah. 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 So this is like the chip that powers all the fancy AI that that you know draws you with the background with unicorns and all that fun stuff. <laughs> That's what these things are, right? These yeah. are not the chips that are in your your phones. There is a there's a lot fewer of them. It's easy to understand why. TSMC could maybe not know yeah. they were making this chip for Huawei. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, dig a little deeper on this. I think it was the same production facility that was making the the Kirin 9000S, which is a smartphone chip. That's what's used on the on the Huawei. I think what is it, the Mate 60. Yeah. So it, it is in the similar area, but the actual TSMC chip was found on this this 910B. Yeah. Which, as Jeff mentioned, is a real like this is a, a big boy chip. Like it's a giant chip that you would see in like a you know in like a data center. This is the stuff that's powering. It. And I think what was more interesting to me too on this was that ByteDance, 
the folks that bring us the TikTok dancing videos, yeah. they were trying to acquire something like 100,000 of these. I think they've only had it like a third filled their order of these these 910Bs. Yeah. But uh, because they're trying to divest themselves off of NVIDIA. They don't want to have just exclusively NVIDIA boards. But, and by the way, they don't have a choice. I mean, NVIDIA right. can't ship the A100 to them. NVIDIA has a whole separate ship line in, intended for China, which is basically like a lower performance version that they're allowed to export. The, is that the H100? I don't know. No, no. I think it's like the A80. I'll okay. tell you right now. I think it's the uh, it's the H20, L20, and L2. Those they're allowed Those to ship to Those are allowed to, to export, yeah. Okay. Now, I think this was a mistake. They should have given it a higher number. And then people would have been like, oh, it must be better. Keep the H100 here and give them the H150. And they'd be like, oh, well, fuck with the H150. And then just tell them it's better. Well, they're going to know. But the order was for 100,000 Ascend uh, 910 B ships. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. trying to do it domestically. You are talking about a fairly, it sounds like a big number, but it's not. You're talking about it's a real small, order. You're talking about a small number of chips relative to like a phone. Uh, I think right now, I think the big guys are very excited to get their hands on 100,000 chips. Well, sure, sure, sure. I'm not saying that they're not, because but I'm saying it's not like a phone where you would make millions oh, of them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I understand what you're saying. Of course. Yeah, that was part of the gap you and I had, which was like, if you're ordering millions of these things, where the hell are they going? Right. Um, that does not seem to be the case. Easy to see why if you made 100,000, you would not know that was in your system. That order was in your sure. system. There was a report a while ago saying that SMIC, so SMIC is sort of like, think of them as the TSMC of mainland China. Of China. They're in China. Yeah. Yeah. That their yield in these 910Bs was something like 20% which is it's crazy, really nuts. I mean, you suspect you would expect on these larger size, larger physical size chips to have lower yield rates, yeah. but a 20% yield is insanely low. I mean, that means four out of five chips that they make are in some way defective. Garbage. Yeah, I mean, maybe they can slow them down. Sure. Maybe they can turn off modules, but you're not getting the chip as designed. How big is uh, the Ascend 910B? What's the like physical, physical size? size? Yeah. It's like, uh, I think it's like 450 square millimeters. So call that like... You know, give or take uh, a little inch over half, half a square inch, a little less yeah. than an inch square, something, oh, something like that. Okay. I mean, it, it's it's so they can fit it. They can fit a lot of them onto a wafer. Oh yeah, yeah. You should be. Able, I mean, you have to because you're going to throw half of them, or two, you're going to throw ninety percent of them away. Apparently, right, right, right. Eighty percent away. Sorry, math. It's hard. Yeah, you're going to throw eighty percent of them away. So you need to. So Byte Dance needs these things because how else are they going to serve up the right version of the Floss Dance to you on their on their exactly. uh, TikTok? The Floss Dance tells you to storm the Capitol. The TikTok. Yeah. Oh, is that what that it does? Uh huh. <laughs> the one that you always notice. It's always pointing to the east. Is that right? I didn't know. No. You ever tried to do the Floss Dance? No. It's it's non-trivial for uh for boomers like us. I see young kids doing it when the and just like, like Dodger Stadium when uh -huh. they, they do the dance camp uh -huh. and little kids like seem to know how to do it just natively. I don't. I, you know never occurred to me to try it you know the expression dance like no one's looking yeah this is what my children do and it makes me so happy i'm trying i'm gonna try to keep that in them forever <laughs> can they do the like, floss dance uh, i haven't even tried yet i'm not even sure daddy can teach them i suspect my little one they don't play fortnite no yet. they haven't gotten into fortnite yet i'm barely getting them into networked minecraft and that's already been a bit of a pill to swallow oh that's so fun that's it is so, fun. so i didn't tell you this they discovered I've, I've been specifically holding them off on multiplayer because uh, i wanted them to play together and i wanted to record the first time they played together yeah the little shits figured out how to do it on their own that's awesome good for them and as soon as they did that jeff it was just 20 minutes of giggling of the most i'm the sure most i'm sure things. and i'm so disappointed i didn't get it recorded because they're never going to do that again yeah like that and i really wanted it but they they were literally just like like they, they'd see one guy like lay down some dirt blocks and they would just fucking laugh it was oh of course so much fun <laughs> and i'm so sad that i missed it and I, you know the lesson for me as a parent but how cool that they figured it out on their own because that that's a really complex thing. Yeah, yeah. That's and then, pretty yeah, great. And then later that night, my kid's trying to guess my SSH key. So sure, it's great. That's, <laughs> you can see where this is going. Like, trust me, daddy's already thinking about ways he's got to protect things in the house. Sure. Right? And people are like, oh, I just turn off the router. I'm like, you think that's going to work on my kids? Like, okay. Not on, yeah, wrong like, kids. Like Max is going to have fiber in his room. I'm be like, where does that go? He's like, don't you worry about it. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Not your business, dad. Not your business. Exactly. Mind your business. You told me to figure it out. I did. And fuck. It was so pure of a moment to watch. Yeah. That combination yeah. of tech. And then it was just them seeing each other in the virtual world. Yeah. And now they are do like they are building shit together. They're assigning tasks to one another. It's the best. Like I haven't taught them about scrum management yet, but they'll literally get in there and they'll be like, it's usually Max quarterbacking. Like, like Jack, you work on the bedroom. I'll work on the stairs. And they just like build this thing <laughs> together. It's incredible. And they, they know commands and they use commands on each other. They teleport. They build, they build um, structures. You know, there's a fill command. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they track coordinates. 
my four-year-old writes down coordinates with a pen on paper awesome and then puts them in and like he's four sure and he's writing down coordinates <laughs> it's and the other day he put in he's like daddy that line is is that over there i was like buddy that's a that's a comma and it was so cute he made like a vertical Aww. like pipe character he didn't appreciate that it was, sure. like the comma it was, awesome. it's so cute yeah, have you have you put up a minecraft a minecraft server for them yet and not i've not put up a minecraft server i put up multiple minecraft servers okay there you go um, because we play bedrock and java and rabbit hole if you want the bedrock edition if you want this the the game to be seen on some of the other devices like the the xbox and whatnot right you actually have to spoof dns locally so i'm i already have my own internal dns server sure so i just started doing it over the weekend spoof dns entries to run something called bedrock connect which emulates the microsoft server so that i can i think and the reason i'm doing this is i can effectively wall them off from all of the public servers yeah which is which is what i want to do for four or five minutes <sighs> these kids figure out dns i am fucked yeah like once these kids are in here like pushing their own ssh key into my get repo sure to like pull on dns and by the way i know it's coming i i like, it's totally like i'm telling yeah, you you're you're I, you're, I you're, totally you're worried about this i'm just telling you yeah. in advance it's going to happen anyway so we're amish now yeah exactly and we're building a barn I'm like here's a hand drill <laughs> figure it out <laughs> <laughs> it's bananas. Turns out the Amish all this time were ahead of all of us. Yeah, totally. They've gone all the way around the rubric. They've gone all yeah. the way around and come back to the other side. And they're like, we're staying right here. Hand tools as far as we go. They made the right choice. GM is ditching Apple CarPlay and Android Auto yeah. for most of its cars, especially EVs. Why not just ditch cars altogether, GM? Well, that's pretty much is what's going to happen. Just, would you would you be willing to give up your Apple CarPlay? No. Would you buy a car? I've retrofitted all my old ass cars with CarPlay. Yeah. Would you buy a car that didn't have uh, Apple CarPlay? And uh, would I buy a car that doesn't have Android Auto? No. Never. Of course not. Never. I mean, it's so wonderful to be able to get in your car and have all your data and everything from your phone that you carry around and you've put all this information into your phone and now to have it on your car nav system and not have that system be a completely separate system it's just great i get the vision i totally understand i, I totally understand the vision of why they're doing this because they want to make money they want to be able to sell you extra services yeah. if, you, if you want the uh you know the channel that has the 70s radio well that's an extra two dollars a month <laughs> okay boomer whatever uh i get it i also i love it being like coin op like they should just put like little <laughs> coin ops in there but it's close it's close <laughs> when you these micro payment things feel very much like they're coin op. yeah if you got a quarter <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to hear some Fleetwood Mac right now. Like like all things that are old come new again. It's just like they, they take that should be their pitch. We want to get rid of CarPlay because we're we're gonna bring the jukebox back and put it yeah. inside the car. That's our innovation. Good job, GM. You're really great. It actually has that metal slider with the coins that you push in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then once a week somebody comes around to your car and it's like a big key. Sure. And they put it in and they take out this giant basket. Take the of coin coins. box. Yeah, totally. And then you're like, fuck, I go back to the bank to get changed. I listen to a podcast in my car. What they say is we want to do tighter integration of features in the car, which I can appreciate. I know that's what they say. I can appreciate that. I will say the infotainment system on my Audi is not perfect. However, it does a pretty good job of letting you interface with the car, interface with CarPlay yeah. separately. Yeah. And guess where I spend 98% of my time? In CarPlay. Of course, of course. Right? I'm very rarely in the car system. If I need to check the oil, because there's no goddamn dipstick on that car, or if I need to, you know, literally service the windshield wipers, I got to go in there. Right. And but it works and it's fine. It doesn't get in there. There will always be things you need to do that are unique to your car. What I would like to see, and what I think they're doing, at least with CarPlay, and I presume with, with Android Auto, is they've been working on allowing the manufacturers to integrate the other way so that you can yes. do those apps. And that's great. I don't want that to yes. be the only way. Like, I don't want to have to use a phone or an app to check my oil, but I like doing it the other way. So I'm, 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 I'm cool with that. And I understand, again, the desire for integration, but like, they haven't done great with software in the past. Right. I mean, no. remember the old infotainment systems, especially when they're trying to do nav. It wasn't great. In theory, it's easier now because you have more providers of mapping software and, and navigation. But do I need a whole nother no. provider of, you don't of another traffic overlays and all of God, those no. things? Absolutely. That's not. crazy. But the, here's the thing that I, I kind of wonder about this. You and I, I think, would both agree that, you know, you're going to make your margin on software mm -hmm. on most of these things. Software is really where you're going to really make your money. Now, I want them to, to make their margin on L5 driving or L4, some sort of autonomous driving. That's where I really think the opportunity is. nobody has l5 yet i get that but yeah. like work towards that goal right because you hit that that's pater and i wonder if they're sitting there going oh this is really hard it's gonna be a long time till we get there we got to squeeze software somewhere else yeah so let's let's go after sirius xm l5 really is hard i mean for those who don't know self-driving cars are rated l1 through l5 l5 being that requires no human intervention whatsoever a waymo car which is as close as we get in this yeah. world is l4 because occasionally they do require human intervention 
and this- it's L five effectively with the the ability for a human to intervene in a situ in like sort of an emergency situation. Yeah, a human yeah. jumps on the intercom and says, "Can I help you?" or whatever yeah. the the overhead speaker, which is but great. that human is a robot. Is that right? Controlled by a human in Tesla's wow. case. Oh my God, that's going to be Tesla's L four <laughs> solutions. It's going to be it's going to be a car that calls a, a robot, and they're going to be like, "Well, sure. still, it's L five. It's a robot, but that robot's controlled by a human." And the robot's actually just a thinly veiled human, and the human that controls it is like some like late fifties overweight chain smoking lady in Nebraska <laughs> used to work the 900 numbers like this is where sure. she's gone and sometimes she gets confused am I driving a car or am I talking dirty I don't know let's see which one we get so you're just like flip cru- a coin you're just cruising along and all of a sudden you get heavy breathing coming over the loudspeaker you're like what the fuck's happening she's like oh I'm sorry you missed the stop sign call me daddy these are the tangents I tune into this show for I know it will be better than this however I distinctly remember hating the navigation systems I mean really hating the navigation systems of 20 years ago I, did, I don't think I hated them because I didn't they were all terrible I didn't know any better I didn't know you that did. they were going as to as soon as you saw an online system yes but that was not until I saw an online system I'm also somewhat surprised that the you know what is it the the NHTSB which is the one that ultimately pushes safety in and down on the car stack right you get sure. SRS airbags they start in the high-end cars and then they push it down and mandate it so that now I don't think you can buy a car in this country without an airbag in can't it, buy a tricycle right? without an airbag three point yeah. safety belts same thing yeah five mile hour bumpers like they do a really good job of making it safer for everybody and i think now even the uh the lane change indicators to tell you if there's a car in your blind spot i think those are mandatory they light up that's when great. someone's in your blind spot that's amazing that used to be a that used to be a high-end car thing only and now it's on everything yeah. you buy a you know a thirty thousand dollar gm it's on the that gm i think that's great i'm kind of surprised that traffic navigation hasn't been pushed down. I, mean, I guess you can deem it's not strictly safety but in some ways yeah it kind of is you can tell people about road hazards coming up also once you've written the software i know it's done now you can put it well, on everything it isn't it isn't I, I high margin yes you're never done you know you got you got updates down the path they're gonna have to deal of with course some, of course of course but so it doesn't really, cost me more to update five vehicles than it does to, to update your, five million your cogs go down to about zero yeah. yeah 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 i mean that's 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 the beauty of it and that's why i suspect that's what they want right is they want that they're like we're just gonna we're gonna have like eight developers in india just knock out some infotainment system for gm and we're done like it'll cost us like 20 grand you're like it's never gonna work no no it's not that's not how it's gonna work and by the way are you gonna update this shit 20 years yeah. i keep my cars a long time so i mean no gms ever made it more than 20 years but assuming they could make a car that lasts more than fucking 20 years which <laughs> it's a benefit they on, have it's a benefit they have it's, yeah. it's planned obsolescence maybe bearish should focus on that for a little while but <laughs> if you get that like who's making software for it i'm, I'm shocked that cisco who, which makes enterprise switching gear yeah. they still release firmware for switches that are 10 plus years old well because they're still in use yeah they haven't eol'd well they're still in, well also they sold it with a contract right right i mean an implicit contract that yeah. you buy this thing we're going to support it for a long time oh dude cars don't have that ibm listen to this ibm still supports meat scales that they sold in 1940 they still right. support them how does that work like really no just like who calls in the Smithsonian and like one Whole Foods? There's like one Whole Foods that got a deal. How many of those are left? How many of those still work? I just love saying meat scale. It's just fun. That's yeah, just sure. two words that roll right off the tongue. That's nuts. Yeah, it's cool though. Do you remember that? There was like that lull in the 80s when you could buy the IBM Selectrics for nothing because nobody wanted them. Sure, sure, I sure. really regret not buying one of those and holding on to them because you can't find them now. They're like unobtainium. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was such a cool crossover because it was like the word processor without the screen. Yeah. Like it was such a cool crossover yeah. that just existed for like a minute. Like the only made those for what maybe four or five years didn't last long not that long i had one and i didn't keep it well i didn't keep mine because didn't have fucking car play on <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> How are you supposed to get from point A to point B? I'm trying to bring us back. I, I mean, I want buttons. I want physical buttons in my car uh-huh. and integrate to my phone. Everybody agrees with that. Like, Everybody fuck. agrees. With that. Come on, this isn't that hard. Not everything's going to be touchscreen. That was a terrible. And I thought, I thought, time. I thought CarPlay and, and and Android Auto. I thought they won. Like I really thought we were at the point where like we're never going to see a BMW navigation system or a GM navigation system with its own system. And yeah. here we are. Well, I'll tell you even worse than that. Google has a separate system for owners. I mean, for for car manufacturers manufacturers that want to have their own, you know, system. You can you can get that from Android. They do make a second system. What do you mean? I mean there is car there is Android Auto and oh. then there's another oh, thing oh, oh. that they make to sell to auto that's Android powered that you can run locally. Yes, that is for auto manufacturers. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I mean, look, they should probably have that market if they're going to do it anyway. You might as well be in it. Yeah. Like Well, of course, of course. Yeah, I, I think Android as much as like to make fun of Android, them not offering that doesn't mean that that they're Would not going to do it. Yeah. Right, so right. sure, you might as well do it. It's also fast 
interesting to me that hardware, generally speaking, hardware is not upgradable on cars. Like the like the 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 when I say hardware, I mean the the computing hardware. Yeah, they haven't really made that an upgradable thing, and I kind of get why. But now in the day of software, you'd think sure, sure, just put a fucking connector on it, right? And like sell upgrades. Like why wouldn't you? I think most people who who are still playing with the computer systems in cars are only doing it for like five or six years, and then I think that's dead. Uh, what do you mean? Like 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 the hobbyist market's dead? No, not the hobbyist market. The people who the, actually the care car. about the software and the cars are the first seven years or six years of the car's life. And then those cars have gone down through the used car sure. market enough that those people are used to, okay, it's just transportation. Um, No. We're lucky if most of it works. There's a small subset of people like yours truly. Very small. But what do you, but what do you, how are you sizing? If you're sizing it on a number of people, yes. But we spend a lot of money maintaining that parts market thereafter, right? So well, you, that's true. That's true. There's just not a lot of you. You're making a lot of more margin on that on those parts than you are on the car. So I don't know what the, how the numbers work out in the end, but but I bet you it's significant. If it wasn't, they wouldn't make the parts. Like there's. By the way, that completely changes when you get to EVs. Well, oh yeah, because they just burn to the ground, of course. Because suddenly there's just not you that just, that aftermarket for yeah. parts. You just need a you just need to have like a broom and a dustpan to sweep up the ashes. <laughs> that's it. That's all you need after the fire. Maybe that's a fire. Nice. Thing. Yeah, no, something to think about. I mean, you still have past the customization. <laughs> For as much as I'm going to miss the the ice, the visceral feeling of an ice motor, yeah. uh, you know, an ice engine, the horrible like, vibration, the, all that kind of stuff. That's what you miss. Ah, you can solve that. Better mounts. Those the are those are solved problems. Of the, oh, I'm going to miss the smell of the yeah, gasoline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody uh, on this podcast. I'm not going to name names. Somebody on this podcast might have spilled like three liters of oil all over his wife's exhaust. Oh my! And had to smell burnt oil. And like, it doesn't <laughs> smell good, but I'm going to miss it. Yeah, I'm going to miss right. it when it's just replaced with the smell of. Fire. Like I definitely like the oil smell. I wouldn't miss that. See, I wouldn't miss that. Yeah, that was an oopsie. Uh oh, dumb, dumbass moment. But we'll we'll talk about that on some other day. Now, did she make you drive the car until it was completely burned off? Fortunately, it burned off pretty quick. There's only one little spot. Um, and but the best part is that car is so damn well sealed. You don't smell anything inside. Oh, yeah. It's only when you get out. Oh, that's great. Every door on every orifice on that thing is double sealed, so you don't you Ooh. just smell nothing. There's no wind noise. It's you know the Germans. They know what they're doing. While we're on the subject of yeah. orifices, orify, orify, orify. Yeah, semi glue type. So effective at treating arthritis that patients were more or less treated out of the study. Yeah. This is an amazing story. This is incredible. It was so effective at treating arthritis that participants no longer needed treatment by the end of the experiment. You got to believe that some of this was due to the weight loss because the people who didn't get the placebo, who got the semiglutide. Takes the pressure off the joints, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You have traumatic weight loss, so you're going to feel less pain. However, the semiglutides do act as an anti-inflammatory. So you got to believe yeah. that that played a part too. Part of me at the end of the day is like, I don't really care how you got there. But if you're healthier and you feel less pain, that's good. As long as the side effect profile is not terrible. And that's the, the bit of the unknown. Well, we don't know. We'll see. You also have a bunch of fucking randos compounding semi-glutide just to try to get into the cash race of making money on this. Sure, sure. That concerns the hell out of me. But I think that's going to get sorted out, especially as they're bringing on more manufacturing. That's, you know, Lily and Novodordisk. Meanwhile, there's a whole bunch of people who are taking those compounded semi-glutides. Yeah. Hopefully that works out. We'll see. Maybe most of them. I think I think maybe most of the people are on those. I don't yeah. Because it's such a supply constraint. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to know better what the, the side effect and outcomes are. I need a little longer to look at this. But not only, you know, you're talking about arthritis. Apparently, these semiglutides are effective in all the A categories of diseases because it also <laughs> appears to be working on Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, yeah. They're seeing something like this is this is real. This is a study of like three years of healthcare data for folks who had been taking diabetes drugs. So anything from like GLP-1s, you know, Ozempic yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to just insulin. And they notice a 70% reduction. Which is huge. In is huge. And your chance of getting Alzheimer's from, from taking Ozempic. Yeah. And and that's fascinating to me. Like, and, and by the way, I'm assuming they're looking at these diseases in alphabetical order. Wait till we get to the B's and the C's. Who knows what it's going to do for cancer? <laughs> you think this will just cure everything? They just, have, they just start at the top. <laughs> Not joking. Novodortis, the folks who make uh, Ozempic, are actually in a stage three trial around this, so yeah. this Alzheimer's data, which because it's, it's, it's so compelling that they may have a drug that also, oh, you know, by the way, makes you less fat, but also- As a side effect, you keep your brain. I have a hard time attributing that to the weight loss. Right. Again, maybe the anti-inflammatory. Arthritis, maybe, but but. Alzheimer's? No. But probably not the weight loss. Plenty of diseases are fat people diseases. I don't think of Alzheimer's as one of them. I think it's great. I think it's great. I hope we find out there are not big side effects. I think there's going to be more generations to these drugs. They're going to get even better. Well, this is, we're, we're on the For precipice sure. of this. We are, For sure. This is just the beginning. I'm obviously a big fan of the work that's being done in the world of, of cancer research and cancer drugs yeah. and really eradicating cancer. In the past 20, 30 years, we've made a lot of progress in this, which is which is really compelling. But man, 
if you can make people, if especially the morbidly obese and even the, the quote unquote regular obese people. Just the diabetic people. That's a shit ton of money saved that you can put back into the system, right? I mean, yeah. that is a ton of cash that you're not going to have to spend treating these folks, lost productivity. It is going to affect the bottom line hometown <laughs> buffet. I got so many. <laughs> how many How many other buffet jokes? I mean, look, it already put soup plantation out of business. How many more buffets must go? Waffle House is next year. Waff- no, fuck that. Waffle House is an institution. <laughs> my thing lastly to that Waffle House doesn't matter. I don't care how slow my stomach is. I'll go throw about back. <laughs> start again. The Waffle House. Just start again. Oh my God. It's, just- it's kind of like uh, it's like those uh, those sushi restaurants with the conveyor belts, except you're on the conveyor. <laughs> like You're on the conveyor. You just go outside, vomit, bring you back in. More chicken and waffles. Back outside, vomit. Back inside, chicken and waffles. They've got a space especially designated for you to vomit. I really want to go to the whoever the LA food board is. I have to pitch a restaurant <laughs> idea to before I get a permit and be like, okay, here's the concept. The people are on the conveyor belt. So they're just like, sir, get, get out of our office. Sir, this is this is not a, a, a pub. Please leave. I, I'm fascinated by this. Again, just as you said, if the side effect profile is low. I'm excited. I'm excited about giving this some time because this is going to be, you know. And, and if, they, if we can show this, I'm, I'm very bullish on, on what's going to come out of this. I, I want I want more people to do this, the testing and find out more about this before I get anywhere near. This is one of those examples where I'm like, not the guinea pig. You have fun. Exactly. I'm not that fat. Not yet. My knees are starting to hurt, but I still know who you are. I haven't, I haven't lost all my memory yet. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Threads now has 275 million active monthly users. Threads. What a great name. That's what they call it in the Caribbean. <laughs> Man is yeah, so man. <laughs> Are you on Threads? <laughs> yeah, man. I get all my news from Threads. <laughs> I, I wish they would. That would be great. They are gaining a million users every day. That's crazy to me. That's that's incredible. Yeah. First of all, I'm a fan of Threads. I, yeah, I, me too. Uh, amazing. Amazingly, they have not fucked it up. And I kind of thought they might fuck it up, but they have not fucked not it yet. up. Quite the contrary. I think they've they've done a good job of like embracing the Fediverse, maybe not as fast as you or I would like, yeah. but they have embraced it. I think there's a one-way data flow out. Um, they are cheating though, right? They like to, to tout themselves as being uh, the fastest growing app ever, which they are, that I believe is factual. Yeah, that's not cheating. That's, that's true. But the cheating is you like bolt it into Instagram oh, yeah. and you give yeah. it all this Instagram inventory and then you just, you just have these users going back and forth and it's like, they're very similar. The, like those products are parallel streams. One's text, one's half photos. Inch apart. One's text, one's photos. Again, great. I'm glad that they're separate, but I could also see. I don't think they're fully separate. I see all the time my Instagram people who post, and I see it on. I see their posts on Threads. I see their texts on Threads. To me, it looks like ad inventory, right? It looks like an ad slot where they're putting like a carousel in to take you from one app to the other, and they are separate apps on your phone. Yeah, I could see a world where those get mushed together, and you've got like the photo stream version, the text stream. You could even intertwine them. Sure. I'm sure there's good reasons to not do that but like they're so similar it's not like one is instagram and the other one is venmo or like your security camera system like they're they're you know they're very similar yeah, 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 yeah. but i think the biggest loser in this from threads probably hasn't even really been been twitter i mean the biggest loser in twitter was was Elon yeah. like that's what made the big that's what made Twitter the biggest loser but it's Blue Sky yeah because Blue Sky was this sort of slow my own words here slow reboot of Twitter like if you look at Blue Sky now it looks just like old Twitter sure. like it looks identical sure. now underneath they've done a lot of things that I'm very uh, uh you know that I'm a huge proponent of yeah mainly you being able to own your own data they've got a different approach to sort of the Fediverse uh but Threads I think took a lot of their the wind out of their sails they just weren't there to launch and what like like met us this thing up in a month yeah, it was quick they just took some of their engineering talent and just popped up and away they went. All right, we have to get out of here, but quickly before we do, have you seen or read anything good this last week? I have, and it's actually a thing that you can watch on the screen, which I know is not normal for me. This is new for you, yes. There was the episode of John Oliver on immigration, which was oh, fantastic. Yes. And like Oliver is one of those guys where I'm like, why am I not watching this more often? Yes. The writing is fantastic. And he actually is an immigrant. He literally went through the process shows, personally just prior to this. He shows the picture ago. of him at his immigration ceremony and like, yeah. he's just as awkward as everybody else in it, as you would expect. For sure. It's really fantastic. So I, I think I watched it on YouTube. I mean, obviously you can see it on, on HBO, but I watched it on YouTube. So I'll put a link in for the show, but it was, it was really fun. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it was really, it was really fun. But so. you have to mention the song. I don't want to give it away. Oh, really? You give it away. Right. No. At a lot of these uh, uh, swearing in ceremonies, they actually play this song called God Bless the USA. Which, which let's be clear, was not made for, uh, like it wasn't made for the US. This was a commercial song made to, as like an album, right? Like the a US record. had to actually but, pay royalty money to use yeah. it. Of course. Go watch the thing from there. Now that's enough for you to for you to know. What I mean is it wasn't it wasn't like the flag that Betsy Ross made for like no. it wasn't made for the US. Like it was this never was like made song. for altruistic purposes. Yes. It was made to make money. Of course. It's kind of fantastic. Like the thread that they yeah. take on this is really kind of fantastic. Yeah. And also 
I mean, can't not giggle over all of the people like listening to this song, waving their little flags, just being oh, like, yeah. fuck, like, really? Is this what I signed up for? Like trying to be patriotic as they're can sworn can in. Can I give it back? Like, is this what we have to do? That's yeah, great. Great segment. Stay stay to the end. The end is it's, amazing. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, that was mine. I will put a link in uh, in the show notes. How about you? Will and Harper, Harper Steele, formerly Andrew Steele, sends a letter to her dear friend, Will Farrell, telling him she has transitioned to live as a woman. They've been close friends for years, and yet Harper never let Will in on that side of her life. Oh, wow. The two decided to undertake and document a cross-country road trip as they processed this change and what it meant for their friendship. Steele had said that although she always loved road trips, she felt nervous about traveling alone through small towns and conservative states as a trans woman, noting that anti-trans legislation in many U.S. states could inhibit her ability to use a restroom or even cause her to be legally discriminated against. Yeah, that's terrible. So for 14 days, they crossed the U.S. together, going into bars, going into auto races, oh, this is amazing. going to basketball games. Oh my gosh. And Will Ferrell is, of course, hilarious. Of course. And by the way, Harper Steele is even funnier. Really? Jimmy Fallon, who's met a few funny people, called her one of the funniest people I think I've ever met in my lifetime. No way. Saturday Night Live writer. That's how they know each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And really, really clever. Wow, that's great. You will feel for this person yeah. who has had to live essentially a lie for a very, very long time and is finally no longer doing it and has found her happiness, which is yeah. just great. It sounds incredible. But you, unlike, you know, 48% of this country have unlocked the empathy achievement badge and some other percentage haven't. Kind of an important thing. There's a hierarchy of needs, folks. We're all farther up than you think. Let's have a little sympathy for people who are not necessarily just exactly like us. Of course. Delightful and charming and in the best possible ways, human to the core. This is awesome. Will and Harper on Netflix now. Hey, I'll check that out. That is the episode. Thank you for joining us for all of this nonsense, a truly terrible podcast from The Awful Company. This is on the web at nonsense.productions. I'm CJ Little. I'm Jeff Parker. If you like this program, please follow, download, subscribe, and like it. Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Antenapod, iHeartRadio, Spotify, My Favorite Overcast, or wherever you may get your podcasts from. Nonsense Studios are guarded by Barkley the Dog. Barkley's a rescue mutt, free and open source. Next time you're tempted to buy an inbred dog or purebred dog, don't. Get a Barkley, you'll be so glad you did. Special thanks to our floor director, Steve Warwick. Thanks, Steve. We'll be every Thursday morning for more nonsense. Please join us. Here's the thing. Yeah. Steve's British. Sure. And he doesn't speak a lick of English. You never understand a fucking word he's saying. Yeah. Everything is just dripping in some <laughs> accent I don't understand. Water porn. <laughs>